Thank goodness for our immune system. We don't really appreciate it until we get sick. We don't appreciate how complex it is, how effective it is, the fact that it's all automatic. Every day we face pathogens that could kill us or get us sick, but we don't get sick for the most part. And that's thanks to our immune system. And there are many moving players, but we can break it down to the innate immunity and adaptive immunity. Innate immunity is innate in us. It's something we're born with. It includes things like our physical barrier, like our skin, our stomach acid, our saliva, which breaks down bacteria. These are things that just stop and fight all pathogens it faces. It's non-selective. It just fights whatever. And if a pathogen or a substance gets into our body, gets past our physical barrier, like through a cut, then it faces our cells of our innate immune system. These cells include things like our mast cells, which produce chemicals that cause inflammation, redness, swelling, pain, you know, the symptoms you usually get if you get a cut or an infection. These include cells like our basophils and eosinophils, which are involved in allergic reactions. These include cells like our neutrophils, which have a ton of toxic substances, which you can use to inhibit or destroy bacteria. These include things like our mac macrophages, the name means big eater, it basically eats or engulfs foreign substances or bacteria or pathogens. And, that, and there are many more players, but that's just a quick rundown of our innate immune system. We have our adaptive immune system. And whereas our innate immune system basically killed whatever, non-selective, whatever comes at us, it fights. Our adaptive immune system is selective. It is specific to whatever it is facing. You have your T cells, which is the mice for the, the conductor of it all. It recognizes that specific attacker and it coordinates the attack towards it. You have your B cells, which has many roles. It can produce antibodies against that specific thing. It, along with our T cells, can form memory cells. Our body can memorize what it faced before. Then the next time it faces it, it springs into action and destroys it before we even recognize we were infected for the second time. So those are our players. That is our immune system. And that's just a quick, dirty rundown. It's so much more complex. We're still doing research on it. So our knowledge of it didn't come in a day. In fact, it came through painstaking research and work. And some of the first scientists to contribute to our understanding of our immune system were Inner Mishnikov and Ehrlich. Let's talk about Mishnikov first. Ilya Mishnikov was a Russian biologist born in 1845. At a young age, he loved science. He would gather his young siblings around and just give these fake pretend lectures. He liked it so much. And when he graduated, he would work on specifically marine animals. During his work with starfish larvae, that's when he discovered things like macrophages and phagocytosis, which is the process of the cell actually engulfing and eating something. And he discovered this by pricking the starfish larvae with a tiny, tiny thorn he got from a tangerine tree. And when he left the thorn and he noticed all these cells would migrate to the thorn. And he hypothesized that during an infection, whenever there's a foreign substance in the body, these immune cells would come in and eat phagocytose, whatever that was. And his idea was not accepted. His idea was rejected at that time, and he would set out to kind of prove his idea. He again would use marine animals to demonstrate it. He saw that when fungal spores would enter crustaceans, then cells would migrate to those spores and eat those spores, phagocytosis. Now he was a troubled scientist. His wife would contract tuberculosis and die. Overcome with grief, he would try to take his own life of opium overdose, but he survived. He would marry again. His second wife would contract typhoid fever and also die. He would be struck with grief, try to take his own life again, but he survived. It was then later he would make these groundbreaking discoveries and he changed his pessimistic outlook on life. That's Mishnikov. Let's talk about Ehrlich. Paul Ehrlich was a German doctor born in 1854. Now he will work with mice and introduce small amounts of poison to mice. And he noticed that when he introduced small amounts of poison, over a period of time, the mice would become resistant to the poison, build up this immunity to this poison. He then wondered if the mice would pass it on to their newborn through pregnancy. He hypothesized that pregnant mice would be able to pass on this immunity to their newborn through the placenta. Sure enough, the newborn mice were resistant to poison, even though they had never been exposed to the poison. He also found something very interesting. Newborn mice, when they nursed, when they got breast milk, they also developed resistance to poison. And now we know that mothers can pass on antibodies through the placenta to their babies and through the breast milk and has a very important role in baby immunity, especially when baby's immune system hasn't been exposed to outside things yet. He'll also make contributions to autoimmunity, our body attacking itself. We didn't really know that many disorders were caused by our body basically attacking itself. 
He didn't call it autoimmunity, he called it autotoxicus, which is kind of a more scary name. But for Ehrlich's contributions to immunity, to autoimmunity, and for Michnikov's contributions to immunity, they were both awarded the Nobel Prize in 1908. That's the story of some of the first contributions to our understanding of the immune system. If you liked the video, make sure you click like. If you want to see more videos of this series, click subscribe. Click somewhere here for more videos of this series. Thanks.